Hey there everyone, Paller here, and welcome back to the Dark Souls Remastered walkthrough. Uh, this is episode 3, so we uh, killed the Taurus Demon, went ahead, saw the dragon, met Sunbro, uh, came on back down here to the bonfire, where... Yep, nothing we can do there. I forgot where we left off entirely for leveling up, uh, but we're going on that. We're going for the Claymore now, that's right. Uh, so in this episode, we're going to finish up through... We might fight the Gargoyles... Probably next episode will be when we fight the gargoyles, but we're gonna get basically everything up top here unlocked other than the gargoyles and go from there. We did pick up a bow, right? Yes. Okay. So, to start off here, let's head up here. What we can do now, and what we're probably going to do, is get a very powerful weapon off of the dragon. So there's the dragon, as you can see, over there. Uh, by default, when we first came in here, we ran down along this path here. This dragon's here, and he's going to be breathing his fire all around. Go ahead and trigger that. Basically, he's a roadblock. So if you don't want to deal with him, what you're supposed to do is actually fall through here. Uh, come around. There's going to be a guy on the second one of these right here. Let him do that. There's a spearman around this edge here. Come here. Come on. Come on. Goodbye. Anyway, once I get rid of him, we'll come through here. There's three little rats in here, uh, and then a ladder up, and we can basically circumvent the dragon. And this is sort of how you can go through the, through the level. Uh, and this would continue on how we would expect to go, uh, and climb up here. But, what I will show you in a moment, it's not really a shortcut, but there's an optional bonfire here that later gives us access to a covenant right there on the other side of this gate. And the dragon is basically right there above us. So, uh, going forward this way would be how we continue on to the level. We don't need this guy following us, so let's kill him off quick. Also, we want to get the claymore. And the claymore is actually on that bridge where the dragon was just breathing his fire. So, to do this, we got several options. We could either play with the AI and get him to come down and run past him. And I think, I think I will demonstrate that. Should I demonstrate that? I'm trying to, I'm trying to determine the most effective way to do this. See, if we shoot off his tail, I think he flies away. And that gives us the sword. Or, we can get him to come down, we run by him, open the bonfire, that gets him to fly away, but that makes it hard to shoot off his tail because he's gone. Now, he will come back, you just gotta kinda re-trigger him to get him to come back and land there again. Uh, let's shoot off his tail. So we're gonna bring out the bow. Now, the bow, so, throughout the leveling pro- or not the leveling, but going through here, we actually picked up two light crossbows, and we actually have some bolts we could equip for that. Now that's not enough bolts to shoot off his tail. But I ended up buying the bow from the vendor where we got the Uchi Katana before we killed him for a very specific reason. The crossbow, if you can right click your your right thumb your right thumbstick and lock on someone, the crossbow does really good at just engaging them. But what the crossbow doesn't do is the crossbow you can't physically aim it. So by putting going into a, a two-handed this, pressing Y, so I have the bow in both hands, I can now physically aim this bow by pressing the left bumper, right? So if I tap the left bumper, it brings up a crosshair here, and then I can zoom in. So what I'm doing is I'm getting here along this edge, and we have like a little spot here. We want to catch the tail kind of right there as it's getting out to the furthest point. All right, and now the dragon's going to take off. He's going to come down here. Oh, I missed it. I aimed too far away. And there's a process here where you can basically hit the tail two times every rotation. So it's going to swing out. We're going to shoot it. We're going to aim here, it's going to come down, tail's going to swing in front of us, and I missed it again. i got to get, get, to get the, the, the place right on that. It's about here, I think. So it swings out, hit it there, and then it's going to come down, swing in front of me, eh, not quite. This is going to take a little bit. You have to hit it about 20 times, I think. There we go. Why are we doing this? Well, like I said, when you, we do finally sever the dragon tail, 
it drops a very, very powerful quality weapon, at least early game powerful. Uh, where the weapons that we've currently been using have had around 115, 110 damage, uh, unupgraded, that's just base level. This guy, his base level, if you can equip it, is 200 damage. It's ridiculous compared to what it is. It's basically a doubles, doubles our damage output. So for the gargoyles uh, that we're coming up to, just for the whole early part of the game, it is a very strong weapon to equip. Now I've played it with it so much that I kind of don't care anymore. Uh, we're going to use the claymore that we get off the bridge up here in a moment. Uh, just because I find the claymore to be a little more fun. Uh, it's, it's not quite as brokenly overpowered. I fired, nope, oh, I thought I fired too soon. Should be about to come off. Maybe one or two more rotations of this. Now this dragon is straight up killable. Uh, we could, we could actually glitch him uh, and kill him with the bow up top. Killing him right now is very difficult. Uh, we just don't have the HP to really survive it. Um, he likes to fly up in the air and just breathe fire straight down onto the bridge. And you're gonna take some fire damage. And with where our HP is at right now, one fire breath isn't gonna kill us, but it's gonna leave us low that if we weren't at basically full health, or, there we go. And I think he's gonna fly away now. Yeah. Anyway, what I was saying is, if we weren't at full health uh, and he breathes his fire... Oh, he didn't fly away. Good. Good. That's what we want, actually. We wanted him to stay there. So the dragon's back at his same spot. Now we can show the AI. Let me finish the thought, though. If we weren't at full health, it would nearly kill us, and it would also leave us so low if we were at full health that we'd have a tough time getting back away and healing up. You don't really want to fight this dragon, so you're probably closer to soul level 50, maybe even higher, depending on how much of a weapon you have for damage. Okay. To get by the dragon, if you don't go for the tail, what we want to do is we want to get up here, get in here and get our shield up. And now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of glitch the AI, get him to jump down. So we're going to stay right here, and we're going to run forward, and eventually he's going to hop. And when he hops down onto the bridge, we make a run for it. And we're going to take a hit. We're, we'll most likely take one hit. There he goes. Now we're going to run for it. And he's probably going to jump up and breathe fire down. Yep, here it comes. Only nicked us, but we can get in here. And once we're in here, just head over to the side, and he's going to fly away. So, he'll jump up there. And then the AI doesn't like us being here, so he'll fly off. Alright. These guys, you don't have to worry about them. They're, they're not doing anything. I suppose we could kill him to get souls. Let's open the gate just in case somehow we die, but now we can go back out here and loot the bridge. Titanite Shard, nice. Soul of a Nameless Soldier, and the Claymore. Claymore is a good thing. Um, I wanted to go back and when I edited my number two video, there was a section where I was talking about having different weapons and all of that, and I kinda, I still stand by what I said there, but I, it wasn't entirely how I really wanted to get it across. More when you're going for different weapons. Actually, let's compare our damage here. So, you can see Claymore, 132, unupgraded Uchi Katana, 107, so that's pretty big. Now, the Dragon Sword, the Drake Sword, 200. 200 damage. So, that's a big upgrade. That thing's gonna, that's a monstrous sword for now. You will eventually outclass it. We're gonna stick with the Claymore. Claymore is a good alternative to other heavy swords. So, while I was talking about you want like different weapons, two or three different weapons per playthrough, at least until you're really good, I still stand by that. What it more has to do with, you need, you know, if you have something very heavy and slow, like the Zwei. Now, keep in mind this is slower, no, actually that's not slower. So there we go, that's the normal swing speed with the two-handed. Still, there's a bit of a wind-up. This can be very difficult when fighting multiple enemies that come at you from different angles uh, or fast-moving enemies. It can be hard to get them. What, the, what these big slow two-handers are great for, though, is weapons that you are enemies that you want to stagger. That you're going to hit them, you're going to reliably hit them, you have a good window to hit them in, but they got a shield or something. That's where this thing comes in really good handy. Well, 
there's going to be points like say those three rats down below there where at least for new players you're going to want something that's a little bit faster so then we can have this here the claymore which will work more as a mid-range or not yeah mid-range but a, a faster more aggressive weapon and there's going to be places where this comes in handy going through and that's kind of what's getting out there other options like for strength builds are like some of the cleavers or strength uh, and all uh, and things on that line we'll see them as they come along here uh, we also want to look at uh, our scaling so we got c strength and c deck scaling and this will scale up as we uh, upgrade this weapon i think we can get that to both b c meaning a little more strength scaling which means we're going to get pretty good stat boosts off of it regardless of if we put points into strength or points into dexterity do we have enough for a level up? We do have enough, so let's go ahead and start dumping a little bit into Vitality. Actually, let's bring our Endurance up. We want to get our Endurance and Vitality both to about 15, maybe 20. Do that. Okay, continuing on. There's one little bit of a tricky guy. In fact, we're about to see what is... I don't know what we're going to call this boar guy here. So there's several different enemies in this game that don't respawn there are the what are they uh whoop hang on let's get up here in this nope don't you hit me boar there is a channeler we're gonna come across one of them here later in this episode there's the heavily armored like knights there's the the silver knights not silver black knights and a few others and these enemies are more difficult than your average enemies but what really sets them apart is they don't respawn unlike every other enemy in the game up oh, i didn't get the shield back up in time darn it now we're gonna get hit by now we're gonna get hit by arrows this is a little bit of a pain in the butt i was trying to kick his shield gosh dang it if i die here let's stick our head back down here and drink um you know, all these hollows and everything, you kill them, they'll come back the next time you, you rest at the bonfire, you die, whatever, they're going to come right back and you're going to be fighting them again. That boar down below, when we kill him, he does not respawn. The black knights, they do not respawn. Can we see the black knight? No. So, let's kill this dude, I'll explain. There's a black knight in that tower there. There's a nice one-two combo from this sword. Uh, so that tower there, actually no, that lower one, the one that's kind of busted up, uh, that's the tower where we came up the ladder below the rats. At the top of that tower is a Black Knight. We're going to fight him probably next episode. He has a chance to drop the Black Knight Ultra Greatsword, which is really, really good. If we can get that thing, oh man, right, that's awesome. Um, Alluring Skulls. So item we just picked up right here, this is another one of their tutorials that isn't really a tutorial so the alluring skull we look at it attracts certain types of enemies basically what they want you to do here is this guy heavily armored he's got armor all around him about the only part that you can actually hurt if you look there his tail his ass is actually the only part of him that's not armored so you can take him out with magic and a few other things with physical damage he basically is immune to but what they want you to do is they want you to throw the alluring skull there and run him into the fire and then he's gonna run away He's going to do his thing. He'll come back. Come on, dude. Is he stuck? I think he's stuck. Run down here. That makes it a lot easier. Big vicious backstab in the ass. Ass stab, backstab. Um, he will, uh, he's got like a rear kick where he'll, come on, I'm, I'm too far away is the problem. Where he'll, he'll kick back his rear legs. Hurts a lot. It could possibly one shot us. Not if we do that though. Anyway, you want to be a little careful with that guy. He's a, he's a bit of a pain in the ass. If you really want to be ch cheeky though, just use the alluring skulls, draw him into the fire. Generally takes about three skulls to draw him in. Okay, now we head down here into what is sort of an ambush. That guy tries to run away. We're fast enough to get it. But what he wants to do is he wants you to chase him up those stairs. And because I threw those alluring skulls, these guys are offset. But generally there's a guy on the left, a guy on the right. 
guy up there, another guy over there. It's basically they're just trying to get you to chase him into an ambush. It's all good. Actually, there were two guys up here. Over here. Oh. There's an item, there's a key down here, an important key. This is one of the ones that the thief, the master key we picked up when we first started the game won't open, mystery key. Uh, we want that. That allows us to get one of the best rings in the game, if not the best ring in the game, though it does come with a caveat. Come on up here. Ah! Ah! I gotta get a feel for the claymore. It's been a while since I used it. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm simultaneously actually playing through this game twice. So I have a, another playthrough that's about an hour ahead of this. I'm playing that is a dex build just to kind of remind myself of everything. Um, so on that I'm using like the Uchi Katana, uh, some of the other dex based weapons. On this one I'm using the strength based weapons. So I'm kind of, I gotta readjust. Come around here to a fog wall I think. Thought there was an item in one of these. Hey, get on my way. Nope. I lied. Maybe we'll go through here. Another safe fog wall, just proceeding through the level. And we're actually above, so right there is the bridge where we killed those uh, archers and picked up the alluring skull. Okay, so, before, as we were coming around, I... I, I Mentioned that was kind of the beginning of the Dark Souls level design. Uh, this was the last episode. Now is kind of the fir the second step up in terms of enemy s difficulty. We're going to start running into more heavily armored enemies on a regular path. One of the things you can do, though, one of the advantages to wearing mostly cloth gear is it's quiet. We we're able to walk basically up on that guy entirely because we wore cloth gear. If we were wearing primarily mail, uh, we don't have it, uh, don't have it, don't have it. Uh, we can put this on maybe. I can't, no, can't really show that it, it makes more noise. Anyway, chainmail gear makes more noise than cloth gear. Uh, leather gear makes more noise than, than cloth. Chain makes more noise than leather, and then plate makes more noise than chain. So it is something to keep in mind. You can be a little more sneaky when you're in gear like this. And it's not a 100% linear. It mixes and matches. Uh, so if you're wearing one piece of chain mail, but the rest leather, it's going to be making less noise than if you're wearing four pieces of chain mail. Like it kind of scales based on that. It also scales based on how fast you're moving. So the slower you move, you can be quieter. Um... But there is a point of diminishing return where even if you're in full plate, if you're in full plate mail, you can walk as slow as possible. You're still going to make noise. A little bit of an ambush here, a guy on the left and the right. So basically we trigger it and then back in to fight one of our first balder knights. That was dumb of me. I thought I could unload it faster than him, but nope, can't unload it faster than him. Come on forward. There we go. Balder Knights are good early on. Um, they drop uh, Tight Knight Shards. Okay, continuing on. By default, we want to head forward, but first we're going to hang a left here. We're going to come on down here. We, you can skip this area to a little bit later. Uh, there's a key down here that we want. Thought I heard somebody behind me. No, I did not. Basement key. We can also go ahead and open this gate for later on. How are we doing on time? Uh, 20 minutes in right now, or just under 20 minutes. Uh, so what we'll probably do is we'll get to the blacksmith, we'll maybe get the uh, second Estes flask, uh, firekeeper soul, and then we'll call it there. Uh, so back in here, three more balder knights. Just by standing here, we'll draw out the first one. If you also look very carefully behind that second balder knight, so you can only see two of them right now, but there are three balder knights in there. But if you look behind them, there's another really big knight. He's kind of right there above the point of my hat. Uh, that is one of the other enemies that only spawns once. Once you kill him, he's gone. Come on around. Got a few more easy fights to go through. I really like the claymore, but 
yeah, I gotta get the feel for it. I love the, it's got really good charging swings, the, those those arcs, but it also has that really nice heavy. Uh, so it, it's good in both tight corridors and open areas like this. It's kind of one of the reasons I really like the Claymore. The Zweihander is amazing, don't get me wrong. There's a reason I, I use it in every playthrough just about. Uh, but the, the Claymore definitely has its strengths. Okay. For now, hold off going in there, because we do have to fight that big knight we were looking at before, and we want to just make sure we have a respawn without going back through all that. So instead, we're going to hang our right. Come on down through here. Unfortunately, we did not get a humanity. I don't think we're hollowed. So are we hollowed? No, we're not. Ah, could have just looked in there. But we get to meet Andre. Andre of Astoria. Got enough for a level up, but we'll hold off for the moment. Bonfire. Light it. Um, let's see, we're going to be doing Sen's Fortress in the future. So Sen's Fortress, this is a higher level area, is out here. There's no reason to go out there. There's nothing you can do while that's closed off. But it means we are going to be using this bonfire a bit, so I am going to kindle it. Uh, so let's consume a humanity. Go ahead and kindle. Also, this will help going down into uh, eh, into the, the forest later on. Run down here, talk to Andre. Andre's our bro, this guy's awesome. So this is the primary blacksmith you're gonna use for upgrading your weapons. Um, he sells the base material for it. Uh, he does a lot of the base modifications with a few exceptions also. Uh, we're gonna learn his gesture, of course. Uh, we're gonna then, uh, let's see. So we can reinforce some of our equipment with the Titan Entrance. We actually have four of them already. So let's go ahead and let's reinforce the Claymore. So we can see here it's gonna take it from 113 to 30, to 103 to 113. Uh, down here we can see it does improve our scaling. Now the scaling still C, but just by making it better, it does improve that C scaling a little bit. Again, it's it's not steps, it's, it's linear. Uh, so there will be a bit more scaling based off of our strength and our decks, so we can do that. Uh, now this next one doesn't actually improve it at all, but we will gain more damage out of it. Okay, and yeah, let's do the last one that works. So now we come back out here and look at our overall stats. Now we're getting 173 damage out of the Claymore, still less than the Drake Sword, uh, but we've definitely closed the gap quite a bit, and we've only gone up plus three. Uh, so there's still a lot of a room for improvement on that. Uh, yeah, good stuff. Let's head up here. Go ahead. Actually, um, with these souls, can we get can we get the repair hammer? Uh, so purchase items. So he does sell Titanite shards, as you can see right there. Fairly cheap. I know 800 seems like a lot right now, but it makes it really easy to get items up to plus five. Uh, so. You know, with a, a few thousand souls, you can upgrade basic items quite a bit. Uh, he souls this Crest of Astoria, um, or Crest of Artorias. Wow, I completely screwed that up. That we definitely do want to get, just not quite yet. We're going to come back for that in a little bit. We can increase our... This will allow us to reinforce, uh, upgrade weapons at bonfires, upgrade armor at bonfires. But mainly what we want right now is the repair box. Especially if you're doing a dex-based build, you're going to want this. Dex-based weapons break a lot easier than strength-based. They just have less durability. Uh, so being able to custom repair your items at any bonfire is quite handy. He also sells a fairly good robust rating of weapons. Uh, the Bastard Sword's pretty good. The Broadsword's okay. Battle Axe I'm not a big fan of. We'll, we'll see some of this stuff. Uh, also, if you didn't get any of the shields, these are plus... Whoops. Whoops. Where are they? These are plus 100 block shields, so physical 100%. Uh, okay, fire, or actually pretty good fire damage. Uh, and then another 100, so there are some shields there for you if you didn't end up getting the, uh, the Drake shield. Alright, let's go back. Let's get our Firekeeper Soul. Go 
Gonna have to refight those three guys right here at the top when we first come around. Uh, so the archer, then the two, uh, they're not boulder nice, they're just hollowed. Alright, shooting at me. Uh, talking about sound again, I think weight, the weight of your items also does contribute to sound. Basically your footsteps are a little bit heavier. So if we had a lighter weapon and no shield or a light shield, our general footsteps would be lighter too. So you can be wearing full cloth gear or even nothing, but if you're carrying a super heavy weapon, you're still going to make some noise. It's something else to take into account, though that's worth testing. Okay, big knight guy here. He's a lot more intimidating than he looks, though if you don't have a very strong weapon, he's going to take a little while to whittle down here. Bring him down. Uh, you're going to want to have reasonably light gear probably, you're not going to be able to block his attacks. You've got to either outrange him or just circle strafe him fast enough that you can get around. Come on, move away from the wall a little bit. Move away from the wall. Where he becomes dangerous is he has a 1-2. Here it comes. So 1. Nope, that's actually the 1. I thought he has a... He does have a 1-2. You can backstab this guy. I don't know why. Come on. Nope. Maybe you can't backstab him. That one's coming around. There it is. There's the one, too. Yep, that hurt. So he's going to try and heal. We could have gone for a heal ourselves. Instead, I went for the heavy attack to interrupt the heal. Um, and it finished him off. You know, don't be too afraid of that guy. We just, we had that bonfire right there. So if you die at most, you got to run back up here, kill these three guys, and then you can fight him again. Uh, it's good practice getting used to the bigger, heavier guys. I'm going to go ahead and we can run in here. And here is our second Firekeeper Soul. So improve our S's Flask even more. Take a look around. So down there you can see there's those Boulder Knights we were fighting before. You can see two of them. The third one, you might be able to see him there through the pillars. He's back in there on the right. He's hidden. Uh, I want to be a little careful though. So you see there's a guy right there, right above my hat. So if you want to, that is another one of the guys that only spawns once. That is the, what are they called? It's not a summoner. It's a, he's a caster of sorts. Um, one thing you can do, you can cheese him from down here uh, and shoot him a bunch. You're not going to do a lot of damage, but he'll basically just stand there and you can kind of whittle him down. He's got about 8, 10, maybe even 12 hollowed with him. And what he does is he buffs them. And what I'll do is I'll go through and show you the non-cheese way to do it, but we're probably going to do that in the next episode. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to take this lift down which is going to bring us back to the Firelink Shrine where we will rest and we'll call it an episode. We'll let this one be a little bit shorter. It'll be just under 30 minutes. But here's the Firelink Shrine. And then the next episode we'll go ahead, we'll clear that guy out, we will kill the gargoyles, uh, and that will be one whole episode right there. So, hopefully you're finding this helpful for the new players out there, or entertaining. I, I know I'm not the not the most entertaining person, so why I don't do Let's Plays or live streams or anything like that, but hopefully it's helpful. Uh, you're f learning some things as you go. It's, it's making your enjoyment of Dark Souls a little bit better. Until next time, though, this has been Power. Thanks for watching.